Could I just have an orange juice? Yeah. You know, I, I keep expecting to see like classes and teachers and students and I'm like, where is everybody? And I keep remembering, it's summer. Uh, you can be forgiven for forgetting that on the west side of San Francisco. For the first two years of college, I actually attended San Francisco State. These were my dorms. I could watch baseball games from there. I took a geology class here, that was fun. This library was closed for renovations the entire time I attended. This future green student housing used to be a, not part of the campus, but a, a fenced off collection of abandoned barracks or chicken coops that were listed on maps as a high school. I don't know what was going on there. To put things charitably, those were the darkest years of my life. But one thing SF State will always have over Cal State LA is that they have a real bookstore and they have my book in stock. No, they don't, it's out of stock. Although that does mean that someone walked into a brick and mortar store, saw my book and unprompted bought it. Actually, I remember the general reading section being way bigger than this. There's like a huge humor section. SF State, get back on that. <laughs> Magnificent. And all under $10. What a country. historian is helping me film. Uh, we were having a more natural conversation, but now we're not. So we are on the, uh, the California car, which is um, one of the only three surviving cable car lines that is not unusable due to tourists. Partly because the cars are bigger and partly because it doesn't go anywhere tourists want to go. Hmm. So we're going downtown. All right. All right. Um, here in the shadow of the Bank of America building, or what used to be the Bank of America building, is what is left of uh, San Francisco's French Quarter. So there were a lot, like back in Gold Rush times, this was one of many neighborhoods that were like enclaves like this. Of course, you had Chinatown, you have North Beach, which is like Little Italy, but there are a lot more. Um, you had this, you had like what's now Jackson Square, I believe, was at one point called Little Australia. And, and you have to ask yourself, well, where was the Jewish neighborhood? And the answer is that there wasn't one. Like, there were Jews living in the French Quarter, there were Jews living in Little Australia. It wasn't, like, they weren't all coming from one place, so they were more scattered around all the different places where other people like them, their neighbors from other parts of the world, other parts of America, had come from. Uh, a lot of them did come from other parts of America. Levi Strauss, I, as I said, was an immigrant, but he had lived in like New York before coming here. A lot of people, most of the Americans who came to San Francisco came from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland. And one of the things they brought with them, keep going. no, no, keep walking. Good. And one of the things they brought with them uh, was their accent. Uh, to this day, people in the peninsula and the coastal part of the East Bay around Oakland, Berkeley, have a different accent from the rest of California, which is much more East Coast-ish. So there you go. If you go to the South Bay or the North Bay, because there were no bridges back then, they have a more normal kind of standard Californian accent. All right, so we are just across the street to the north. Uh, this is the intersection of Washington and Montgomery and Columbus. But uh, Gold Rush Times, Columbus Avenue didn't exist in, uh, yet. It was added, I believe, in the 1870s to sort of navigate between the giant hills. And this marker we have here is to commemorate the first Jewish religious services uh, ever to take place in San Francisco. It was in 1853 and it was for Rosh Hashanah. The problem, not only was Columbus Avenue not here, but also this isn't where that happened. This is misplaced. 
the actual location was here on the southeast corner of Kearney and Jackson in what is now Chinatown. Uh, this was done by the congregation that would eventually become Emmanuel. That's one of the two original Jewish congregations in San Francisco, the other being, of course, uh, Sherif Yisrael. So I said there weren't any Jewish neighborhoods at first, but later on in San Francisco's history, there were. So I am now uh, walking down Folsom Street in the general area known as South of Market. In particular, I am in an area uh, which when I lived here was known as Rincon Hill. But after I moved away, some enterprising real estate developer changed the name of the neighborhood on Google Maps to the East Cut and the city just kind of accepted it. This is something that locals found to be very creepy. So this was like where the sweatshops and the tenements were in San Francisco. Uh, it was much like the Lower East Side. This was very, not a good place to be. The tenements were of course all destroyed along with most of the city in uh, the great earthquake and fire of 1906. But even after it was rebuilt, it was still kind of a slum. It just wasn't as much of one. And even when I lived here, it was uh, it was pretty it was a pretty abandoned place because the dot com bubble had come a few years earlier, and uh, you know we had this the Great Recession had just begun when I moved here, so it was a real nothing place. Like there weren't even that many tall buildings, but uh, you're not gonna see any evidence of the tenements here. We're uh, we're just gonna have to see where people moved afterward. But first, I want to show you something. What fucking witchcraft is this? 14 years I've known about this. It never fails to amaze me. Greetings. I'm now in the Fillmore District, where I've never been before. This is where a lot of Jews who formerly lived in the tenements south of Market lived. Uh, though you would be hard pressed to see any evidence of it now. So there's not much to see here. Or is there? This is one of uh, only two Jewish restaurants left in San Francisco. And it is not kosher. Turns out this is actually part of a chain that was started in uh, in the Mission District, which is probably the neighborhood of San Francisco I know best, and I had never missed it. So here I'm having the uh, the kimchi Reuben, which is actually more similar to what you might find in Israel, at least pickled cabbage as an ingredient. So there you go. You know what? That sandwich had a little too much going on. I've just been informed that this is the Fillmore Jazz Festival. And it's gone on like this for three blocks so far. Let's see if it continues to our destination. Well, I have peeled away from the Jazz Festival, which does continue northward for all I know indefinitely all the way to the North Pole. Uh, that's because we're now on California Street in Pacific Heights. The uh, California Street cable car that I believe you saw earlier in the video used to come all the way out here. It used to go all the way out to Divisadero. I wish it still did. That would be very convenient. So this was like the first Jewish neighborhood. The first Jewish neighborhood that was a Jewish neighborhood in San Francisco. Uh, this was mostly the Yekas, the people who came over in the mid 19th century and really made it in San Francisco. And you can tell, because it's still a very upscale place. Uh, this is actually now 
the most expensive neighborhood in the United States. But that's, <coughs> but that's not why we're here. We're here for that. This is Sherit Yisrael, one of the two grand synagogues of San Francisco. We'll be seeing the other one later. Uh, it's closed right now because it's Shabbat. Um, there's nobody around, so... Holy shit, I just saw the door open and close. Let's take a look. It wasn't just me. There was someone in there. But uh, it is closed and she wouldn't let me in. So, here we are. There he is. There's Moses bringing the Ten Commandments down from Half Dome at Yosemite. Just as the legend spoke of. On to the next one. And here it is, Emmanuel, in the Richmond district, one of the actual streetcar suburbs. Never a majority Jewish one, but a, a large prevalent Jewish community. The sun sets the same way. I'm very tired. But this one, it's like they're not even open at all. It's like fenced off and boarded up, undergoing renovations, I guess. And uh, I don't think there's anybody around now. And with that, we finally made it from Wise to Lilienthal. I gotta take this off, it's real uncomfortable. That's how you know it's wrong. Go Dodgers, we'll see you next time for more Jewish history on the road. I don't have a conclusion. This Malcolm X mural, uh, the original design featured skulls with stars of David for eyes, they had to repaint that right away. So uh, here's something else you'll never see in media from San Francisco. It's the view from Dolores Park. You'll never see it because it's in a neighborhood that isn't in TV or movies. Um, I used to come up here a lot after lunch or after dinner. It was summertime. When I moved here, there was only one skyscraper on Rincon Hill, that one at the very end, one Rincon Hill. It was actually still being built when I moved here and uh, back then you could see the uh, Bay Bridge but it's all been obscured by Rincon Hill. I think that's where we're gonna go next.